Hello there, POEers. We're going to continue our discussion today on fluid power. We're going to talk about gas. Gas can be multiple things. Here we have air inside of a balloon, but the balloon is a great example of some of the gas laws that we're going to talk about today. So let's take a look up here. Gases are affected by three variables. They are temperature, pressure, and volume. So we would expect if I increase the temperature of the air inside of this balloon, it is going to expand because it's being affected by the temperature. We could expect that if I press on this balloon, the gases inside of it are going to compress and they're also going to heat up because it's affected by pressure. And we could expect that if the volume changed and the balloon got bigger but not the amount of gas in it, that the pressure and the temperature would decrease. Or if we open it up and let the air out of this balloon, we would feel cool air rushing by because volume is decreasing. So temperature, pressure, and volume are the things that affect gases. Next, gauge pressure versus absolute pressure. If you have an air compressor at home and it says there's 100 PSI in it, that is the pressure inside of that gauge, inside of the hoses. But that's not the total amount of pressure because we are under pressure from the atmosphere around us. We use the figure of 14.7, 14.7 pounds per square inch is atmospheric pressure at sea level. And it's clo we're close enough to sea level that that's what we use. So if you're ever asked to solve a problem and you're asked to solve for the absolute pressure, you have to take the gauge pressure, let's say it's 100, add to it the 14.7, and you get a total of 114.7 pounds per square inch. That's what absolute pressure versus gauge pressure is. Th thermometer temperature versus absolute temperature, okay? Well, we all know that zero on the Fahrenheit scale certainly isn't zero, and uh, zero degrees and cents Celsius isn't either. Absolute zero is minus 273, 273 degrees Celsius. How many Fahrenheit? Well, we don't use Fahrenheit down there. We use the Rankine scale, and Rankine scale is the same incremental size each degree as Fahrenheit, but it starts at absolute zero. It takes 460 degrees Rankine to get to zero degrees Fahrenheit. So if you ever have a thermometer that's reading 100 degrees Fahrenheit, you need to add to it 460 degrees Rankine, and that will give you your absolute temperature. So whatever the temperature is on your thermometer in Fahrenheit, you add 460 to it, and that is degrees Rankine. These are things we're gonna have to keep in mind as we solve our gas problems. Finally, what we're gonna look at today are there the perfect gas laws, and they're perfect not because I wrote them, but because these three gentlemen did. There's Boyle's Law, Charles's Law, and Gay-Lussac's Law. And now let's go over to the big screen of death and check them out. Well, here we are at the big screen of death, and you can see we have Boyle's Law, Charles's Law, and Gay-Lussac's Law. And they're simple formulas that you're going to implement to find the answer, but you don't have to memorize them because on your engineer's formula sheet, right there, top of section nine, are the three laws, right up below Pascal's law, one of your favorites. So all the information, you're not gonna have to memorize the formulas, simply know where to find them and how to utilize them. So let's take a look at what Boyle's law says. Boyle's law says the volume of a gas at a constant temperature, 100 degrees let's say, varies inversely with the pressure exerted on it. So as we take this cylinder and we fill it with gas and we compress it, you can see as the volume decreases, as the area becomes smaller, okay, pressure goes up. Okay? Pressure is getting a lot higher as we compress it. Makes good sense. The formula is written like this. The pressure at the first position times the volume at the pers fir first position is equal to the pressure at the second position times the volume at the second position. So you'll always be giving many, um, three of the four variables and you simply have to solve for the fourth. So here we go. A cylinder is filled with 40 cubic inches of air at a pressure of 60 degrees PSI. The cylinder is compressed to 10 inches cubed. What, uh, what is the resulting absolute pressure? Now they're talking about absolute pressure. So remember, in absolute pressure, we've got to add to 14.7 to our readings. So first of all, we know beginning pressure is 16 pounds per square inch. 
We don't know the second pressure. We know the first volume is 40 inches cubed. The second volume is 10 inches cubed. So we have three of the four variables, okay? But we gotta convert to absolute pressure. So yes, we're gonna add 14.7 to 60, and we have 74.7 pounds per square inch. That's the figure we have to use in our calculations. There's our formula. We plug it in, 47 pounds per square inch times the 40 is equal to P2, which we don't know, times the 10 inches cubed. 47.7 times 40 is 2,988 divided by 10. Now they're using significant figures here. You would get 298 as an answer. I can't explain to you really why they're using significant figures. That's beyond me. But if you would get 298 or round it off to 300, which is 3.0 times 10 squared, you would then uh, get the same answer. So there's Boyle's Law. Formula is very simple. And again, it's found on your formula sheet. Charles's Law says the volume of gas increases or decreases as the temperature increases or decreases, provided the amount of gas and the pressure remain constant. So what we're going to do here, we're heating things up and we're cooling them. And what happens to the volume inside that cylinder? Well, as the temperature rises, the volume's going to increase. That's just like our balloon. If I heated the air up in the balloon, we would expect the balloon to expand. What's our formula for that? It's volume at the first position is equal to the temp, divided by the temp of the first position is the same as volume at the second divided by the temp at the second. Now we're using temperature here, so we're going to have to worry about absolute temperature. All right, so here we have a container. It's filled with 28 cubic inches of air and is sitting. So here's our container. You can't, it's not this container. It's sitting in a bucket of ice water. That's our container. It's 32 degrees Fahrenheit. It's cold. The container is removed from the icy water and is heated to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. What's the resulting volume? So we're taking something very cold and increasing its temperature. So first thing we got to do is make sure our temperature is given an absolute up oh, there goes our container it's getting hot now okay we know volume one is 20 inches cubed we don't know volume two whoa 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 we do know temperature one is 32 degrees fahrenheit temperature two is 200 degrees fahrenheit but we got to add the 460 degrees to them so that we know our beginning temperature is actually 492 degrees rankin our ending temperature is 660 degrees rankin so we're going to use those two numbers to plug in for our temps so when we take a look at our formula again, V1 over T1 equals VT over T2. We plug those numbers in, and we get a final volume of 38 inches cubed. Very simple uh, algebra there. There's Charles's law. And moving finally to Gay-Lussac's law, absolute pressure of a gas increases or decreases as the temperature increases or decreases provided the amount of gas and the volume will remain constant. So we're not talking about volume now, we're talking about the pressure building up inside of a fixed capsule, okay? So we're gonna heat this thing up and it is going to put more and more and more pressure on that container. Our formula here is pressure one over temperature one is equal to pressure two over temperature two. And note that temperature again refer to absolute temperature and pressure refers to absolute pressure. So we're gonna have to add the 14.7 for pressure, the 460 for temperature. And when we do that, oh, here's a scenario. A 300 cubic inch sealed air tank is sitting outside. In the morning, the temperature in the tank is only 62 degrees Fahrenheit, nice and cool. And the pressure grades reads 120, no problem. However, by the afternoon, the temperatures inside the tank is expected to be close to 90 degrees. Oh my goodness, what's gonna happen? The pressure's gonna build up. Is our tank going to be able to hold it? Well, let's just take a look. So we have volume of 300 cubic inches, pressure of 120, temperature of 62, temperature of 90. What's pressure two? We got to make sure we're doing our absolute pressure. So we're adding our 14.7 to the beginning uh, pressure. We got to add the 460 degrees to our beginning temperature and our ending temperature. So now we're at 522 and 550. Now we have the variables that we're going to plug in. So P1 over T1 turns to 134.7 over 522, which is all equal to P2 over T2, which is P2 over 550, solving for P2, and we get 140 pounds per square inch. And so if you know that's going to happen to the container that you have sitting outside, you better make sure it can withstand that or there's going to be a minor explosion outside of the building. 
So those are the three gas laws that we have to worry about. And those are the ones that you'll have some problems to solve. And just don't forget, they're on section nine. Right there it is at the top. There are the perfect gas laws. Utilize them.